Alright, so we're going to adjust, we're going to make the adjustments that um, this manual recommends. So, first thing it talks about is um, backing off this idle speed screw here. You want, you want this linkage to be all the way, all the way home without hitting that, that screw. Once it's all the way home, you need to pull this lever over here. Let's just bring it a bit closer so you can see. So without, without that touching, you see there's a gap there. You need to pull the, the butterfly over. So it brings that lever up. See that there? They, what do they call that? They call that the, um, the fast idle speed settings. This is how, this is when your choke's on, how, how fast the car's gonna run on the choke. Um, so you can see as I go like that, it brings this cam around down here. So once you put a little bit of pressure on that, on that butterfly, just to keep it rocked over, then you look down in here and you'll I'll get something to point to it. Um, if you look down in here, you'll see um, that little lever hits the hits this this first. There's the first step. There's the second step on that cam. So it goes in that gap there, and this 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 lever needs to hit. See how it's hard to focus there, but see how it hits in there on that position right there. Once it does that, once it does that and it's up against there, it's supposed to just touch with a little bit of friction on it, right? You can just see it move that lever there a bit. It needs to do that, with, it needs to do that without moving that so that those butterflies are shut, right? Once you've got it like that, then this, this gap here between the choke butterfly and the, and the body of the, um, of the horn needs to be measured. So um, it talks here about the measurement should be between 0.170 of an inch and 0.190 of an inch, 190 of an inch. So that's about four and a half mil to five mil, pretty close. So when you measure that in there and you make sure the lever's back, make sure that's in there, everything's right, then you're measuring down in this gap here with, I've got these two sizes, I've got four mil and a five mil drill here. And you're measuring that gap down in there. See how the drill bit four and a half mil fits down in there, but five mil doesn't. So four and a half mil is a little bit slack. So it's right in the middle of that gap there, right? So that that will give you the correct um, correct idle speed, so which I think is around it says here it's about one three fifty RPM, so thirteen fifty RPM at fast idle. Um, if you need to adjust it to get that gap correct there, you just get a pedal along those flyers and you grab. Am I focused on this thing yet? If you need to adjust that that gap, so let's move the butterfly over. And when you move that butterfly over, see how it moves this lever up and down here, this lever here, and this and this rod. You grab it. You grab the pliers here, and you bend the rod to make a tighter bend to open that gap up to, to whatever you want. Or if the gap is um, too far out already, you bend that lever the other way. So you open that angle out, which moves that lever up, which will then close that gap. So that's how you adjust your fast idle at that first step there, um, as per the manual. So then if adjustment is necessary, bend the fast idle rod at the point indicator. So you can see on this book here, it has that, um, is it focused on there? I don't know if it is focused on there, is it? Um, let's go down there. So you can see in the book here, it talks about bending that rod. So it points there to that point of contact. So you bend, you're bending that rod there to either open the angle up or close the angle to change the to change the speed. It says with the rod at the top of the slot, which is in that spot right there, which is in that spot right there. Um, adjust the length by bending the rod as shown. There you go, fast old. So, so then we've got down here, wide open kick. So hold the choke closed by applying light pressure. So hold the choke closed to the upper end of the choke valve. Um, there's the then, I'll open this back out because it's a bit too close. 
It then says open throttle lever to wide open position. Open the throttle lever to wide open position. So that's this one down here. So wide open position. And just enough to insert a 2.235 inch to 0.265 inch drill shank into the choke valve wall of the air horn as shown at B. So down there, as shown at B. To adjust, bend the ear on the throttle lever. Bend the ear on the throttle lever, which is this little ear here. Um, and the throttle lever as required to obtain the correct setting. Note, the fast idle rod must be at the top of its slot. Fast idle rod, which is there in the, in the top of that slot. So there's that fast idle rod there that we bent before. So see it's in the bottom of the slot there now. Top of the slot there at the moment. Which doesn't let the choke actually go on all the way. If it's back here the choke can actually close up again. It's in the top of the slot. Um, in the fast idle cam when making this adjustment. So here it talks about putting that drill shank. Which is um, 0.235 to 0.65 drill shank between there. Um, light pressure to be applied, to applied. So you're, you're trying to, when you're doing that, that's all the way over there. See how when I do that, this fast idle one for the choke comes around and hits that that lever. This lever here, this lever here, is the one that we're going to bend this time to set that correct position. So I'm just going to work out what um, 0.235 and 0.265 drill bit is, and then I'll. Um, I'll show you because I've only got um, metric drill bits, so I've got to work that out. Right, so it is 6mm and 6.5mm. So what it's asking me to do this time is, it's asking me to go full throttle on this one, full throttle on your butterflies, M move this choke butterfly around like that until it gets to that position. And then you've got to put a drill bit Oops, that's not correct, it's moving now. Then you've got to put a drill bit down the side of here. You can see this one is 6mm, that's a little bit loose. And 6.5 just doesn't go in there, so it's in between that range, so it's actually correct. If it was wrong, I'd have to get the pliers on this little tab right here and bend it up a bit or bend it back to get that, to correct that position. So, there we go, so that what that does is it stops that stops that from going all the way back. So that's that checked. So now we've got here, depress the diaphragm. Hang on, let's just have a little bit of a drink. Depress the diaphragm to full limit of its travel. Now we're turning this around. We've got the diaphragm here, got the full limit of its travel there, right? You see it operating? Excuse me. Um, of his travel, apply slight upward pressure to the choke lever to take up the slack in the linkage and to deflect the modulation spring so the choke link is at the end of its slot in the, in the choke lever. So, there's the spring there. Um, it shows that, um, that spring in there at the moment. Shows it in there. Apply adequate pressure there. Depress the diaphragm to its full travel. Diaphragm washer must rest flat against the housing of the choke valve. Yep, does that. Um, hold in, hold in this position. Check the choke valve opens opening C, which is that flap at the top. Um, which should be 0.220 of an inch to 2.222 for manual or 0.190 to 210 for automatic transmissions. So I have 0.190 which is that's nothing like that. 0.190 before was um four and a half to five mil, 0.17 point. So, I need to bend this, this rod here, that 
this point here, pull the way in, take the slack like that, like it says. Set it down here. Depress that, take the slack there, bend this rod to straighten it up a bit. There we go, let's see. Now pull that the way back in. Take the slack there, it's looking better. Pull that back in, take the slack there, measure that gap. Bit smaller than five mil, bit bigger than point uh, four point five, so that's correct. So there's the correct gap there now when this when this thing is fully depressed on this side. There we go, that's that one done too. All right, let's, that's the vacuum kick, they call that. Um, closed choke valve check. <laughs> Man, there's some checks on this thing. There's a lot of setting up on it. That, it's what we've got to do, right? Let's just get this video. Right, our next step is we've got to check this dimension of the pump rod. So from, let's move a pointer. So from the, the bottom of that, Looking at it that way, so from the bottom of that rod to the top of the plate on the on the actual um, the body of the carby. So that says dimension A should be between 0.61 and 0.63 of an inch. That's like 15 and a half to 16 millimeters. So I've got my ruler here. You got to make sure that this is all the way back. Butterfly is full closed. Um, and then you're going to measure from the body there to the bottom of that pin. This measures here at about 17 mil. So I've got to adjust that spring there. So I've got to make that, I've got to open it up to make it longer to bring that, that down like that. So right now I'm going to grab this with the pliers, bend it up a touch, do the same thing again, make sure it's all the way home. 16 and a half, a little bit more. Bend that right up again. Measure it one more time. 16 mil. There we go. So that's that's that pump position, pump plunger. Right. One of the last adjustments we've got to do on this carby now is um, we have to get the choke fully over. We've got to measure from where this choke lever. Out. You see this little choke lever that sticks out the side here. Make sure that's. Make sure the butterfly here is fully closed. Like that. And make sure this little lever is all the way up. And that lever is all the way up. You measure between there and the top of there. And it should be 30, 28 millimeters. Which you can see there, there it is, 28 millimeters. As shown, as shown in this picture here, you can see down here it says from top edge of this um, thermostat lever pickup here to the center line of that hole there 28 millimeters obviously someone's adjusted this before you can see how much that lever's bent there if you've got to adjust it when you when you bend this it sort of turns it down or turns it up if you if you bend that up it makes this gap go bigger if you bend it down like it is there it makes that gap go smaller so you can get that 28 mil there um, the only other Things you've got to do with this is once it's actually sitting on the car you have your um your slow idle screw here right so this is backed off should be backed off there you go it's backed off all the way so it's not actually there you go so it's not actually touching anywhere you can see there's a gap between there when you get it on the car you'll turn that screw until you desired idle speed so if it's automatic i'm guessing it's going to be around seven 700 750 rpm somewhere around there so once you get that running then you come back to these two um, mixture screws down here and what you do is they're at one and a half turns out if you remember when we first set it up 
what you do is you get one of these, you make sure the air cleaner's on, you make sure the choke, everything's on, you make sure the engine's hot and it's running how it's supposed to. You then adjust this mixture screw all the way in, well not all the way, but you keep turning it in until, you, until the engine runs fast, which means it's running um, lean. And then you screw it back the other way until it runs a bit slower, which means it's running rich. And then you just turn it slightly in again until you find sort of, so you find sort of the happy, the happy place in the middle. Then that one's set. You go back to the other one over here. You turn it all the way. You're not all the way, but you turn it in until it starts running fast, which is running lean. And you turn it the other way back out till it runs rich. And you just turn it back slightly till it gets a good idle again. And that's your carburetor setup. <clears throat> again, make sure you've got a new air filter on top of it. Make sure you've got it hooked up to a good um, filter. I'm going to buy the inline filter that sticks out here. That is the factory correct type one. And that's the two videos I got out there at the moment. One's for how do you overhaul the whole the whole carburetor. Um, and this one was about how to set up all the linkages and stuff. The the setup, the linkage setup one is pretty important that you, um, that you get it right. Um, primarily because um, hardly anyone ever does it. They never do it right. So just need to make sure that um, everything's correct and there's no issues with it when you when you're working on it. So the pump pump is set up the right way. You can see it actuating there. The pump lever as you pull the throttle on, you see it pushing the pump down there. The same with the choke. When you activate the choke on this side, if it's if it's a manual choke, it'll move this manually. If it's automatic choke, it will it will adjust it automatically and then it will back off as it gets warm. Um, you've got the diaphragm here which will pull the choke back off once it's um once it's actually idling up it'll 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 pull that back and take it off um, take it off idle off um, run fast and that's pretty much it this this wing down the top is what holds the air cleaner on so right now I'm going to bolt this under the car but this bit here I'm going to work out I'm going to bolt off the engine sorry this bit here I've got to work out whether I'm going whether this car was automatic choke which I don't think it was or manual choke and if this is the correct manual choke arrangement for it, it looks a bit sketchy to me, but it's supposed to go on the side there and clamp on. And then this turns internally, which moves that lever like, like this. And when that lever turns, it turns the choke inside. So I don't know if that's correct or not, but um, that's pretty much what it's got at the moment. Okay, Carby's overhauled set up ready to ready to run the engine I'm just going to take all these nuts off carefully here don't want to drop them down the ball there I'm not sure if you've seen inside one of these uh, manifolds before but they're, they're like a dual plane manifold one one of the throttle bodies does seven um, seven six one and four and the um the other throttle body does two eight five and one uh, five and three so it goes on this direction but first we've got to put the um gasket on there the gasket shouldn't need any gasket glue when it goes on there carby goes on like so, put this little round one on the top here for the air cleaner. Um, I'm just going to get a couple of um, couple of washers to put on that. I don't want that, those nuts to bite into the into the aluminium. Right, I've got a washer on each of those. I'm just going to put these nuts on carefully now. I'm going to get these front ones on a bit first because it's you only got to lift it up to get the nut to go into the spot where it's got to fit in there. Come on, as you can. There you go. Get one started. Front one's in a shit spot too. Don't know why they made them like they did. They could have gave them a lot more clearance.
All the nuts are on. I'll just nip up the corner ones first. Obviously, you can't get the ring spanner on, so you gotta sort of get them with the with the end of the open ender. Which is really shit because well, you can't get a socket down there. This, these ones you can get pretty open with the, the ringy end, but um, don't go don't go overboard with them. They're only threaded into aluminium, and they're only crushing down the aluminium tabs on the bottom of these carbies there too. So. If I need that ring in there, I'll have to choke up. Oh, slightly. Alright, the back one. See, back one's really fits no problem. Old spanner out, half inch spanner. I'm going to grind the grind the radius of the back of it here to make it smaller enough to get in in the gap here to do these do these ones up the ring. There you go. I just ground the ground the end of that ring spanner so it's got a real thin thin top on it, and I pull the choke back <coughs> out of the way. Spanner fits on. You get it tight. <coughs> I'd be freaking screwed if I didn't get this on like this. There's no way in the world I was going to get that. Those bolts tight. Screw this on yet. I've got to take the dizzy cap off to get that on. So we have that on there. <coughs> um, because I took the tape off there now, I don't really want any crap falling down the top. Um, this is the correct wing nut, as far as I know, for this type of air cleaner. Obviously, the air cleaner is not ready for ready for installing this engine yet, but. Um, I've, um, I'm just going to sit it on there just to just to keep it all clear and clean. Um, we're going to get this sandblasted and powder coated. Once that's done, it'll look um, look a million bucks. Get the sticker on the top, the old 4.2 liter um, 253 sticker on top of this thing, and. Um, we're definitely getting close. So I've got to get that blasted and powder coated. Got to get these pulleys blasted and powder coated. This is the wrong pulley for the bottom. Actually, I might be talking to myself. I don't know if you, you can see what I'm talking about, but on the front of the engine here, that's the correct top pulley. I didn't have the correct bottom pulley. I only had this, um, only had this this must be off the Statesman Caprice or something. It's a three, a three groove pulley. Um, obviously, it will work if I if I use that centre 
screw, but it's not the right one. So I need the small one that just comes out and lines up with this, um, this thing here. Then obviously I've got the bolts that go on. I'm going to blast this so it looks grey like the rest of it. And then I have the, have the fan that goes on the front of it here. So definitely getting there. These items here, once the, once the other pulley turns up, I'll send them out, get them all blasted, get them coated, put them on the engine, and it will look a million bucks. Righto, that is the end of the Carby video. Um, so yeah, keep keep an eye out for the next one.